it's legal in some of the countries to grow hemp for fiber. And in, in France, uh, this woman whose name is France Parier, Madame France Parier, she builds about 300 houses a year using hemp and cement lime, and she makes a thing called isochandre, and she mixes the lime with hemp herbs, the leftover parts of the hemp plant after the fiber has been extracted. And hemp does this amazing thing. It turns to stone, it petrifies. And so when you mix the lime, lime and hemp herbs together, you get something stronger than cement at one-sixth the weight. C'est-à-dire que dans un premier temps, j'ai cherché à pétrifier les végétaux, c'est-à-dire à, à minéraliser les sèves. Et puis ensuite, j'ai trouvé euh, des archéologues qui m'ont dit avoir vu des sites mérovingiens et des sites égyptiens qui avaient été vraisemblablement faits de ces mêmes techniques. Madame Perrier has had thousands of prospective orders for her houses from all over Europe. But like so many others, she is held back only by the restrictions on hemp production. Imagine a world we could live in, plant these seeds in the minds of our children, plant these trees and grow a solution. Hemp can heal the world. Hi, my name is Clark Snell. I'm the managing director of the Nauhaus Institute which is a nonprofit dedicated to finding carbon neutral solutions for the built environment. What's the point of that? Basically, uh, climate change. We're, we are warming up the planet. That's the initial impetus is going to be warmth and then other things are going to happen. It is our fault and it's our fault because humans fault because we are burning too many fossil fuels that put carbon into the atmosphere. It's pretty much that simple. So the solution is also very simple. We just need to stop burning fuels. The way we do that is becoming more efficient. So I'm standing in front of uh, the Nauhaus Institute's prototype carbon neutral building. One of the main components of this building is hempcrete. I'm standing in front of a hempcrete wall. What hempcrete is, is industrial hemp. The, the, the core of the stalk of an industrial hemp plant is called shiv. It's a woody fiber and it's mixed with a lime-based binder to make an insulation material that can, uh, you can build walls or, or roofs with. The reason that we're using it, and I think it's interesting in terms of the whole hemp debate, I think this is the best wall system in the world. So I'm all, I'm all about hemp. I think hemp's an important thing to, to, uh, to push as a, because it's food, fiber, building material. But really, I'm choosing this material because it's the best in terms of building science. And why is that true? First of all, because this is a, what's often called a breathable wall system. And I don't mean breathable for air. We're actually building an airtight wall. But it's breathable for water. And why is that an advantage? Well, in a typical wall, you have a cavity that you seal tightly and then you fill with insulation. Well, water will get inside that cavity because water does, that's its job in the world. My body is 70% water. Uh, the, the surface of the planet, I think, is 70% water. It gets everywhere. It can climb up hill. It can, it's through capillary action. It can dissolve any material anyway. So what we want to do in a building is create a wall that welcomes water but doesn't rot when it lets the water in. And that's exactly what hemcrete does. It, it, uh, when, when humidity changes in the air outside, the wall can take on that extra humidity and hold it until the humidity drops outside and then it'll let it back out. In the meantime, because the lime is wrapped around the cellulose, it, the cellulose won't rot. So therefore we have a, a wall that can adjust naturally to, to humidity levels without rotting. That means that this wall will last a very long time. It also means that indoor air quality is going to be much improved. Now we're on the inside of the building. We were talking about the breathable qualities of hempcrete. This is a hempcrete wall with a scratch coat of earth plaster. This is actually a plaster that we made on site with just clay, subsoil, and sand we mixed together. This is another great quality of a hempcrete wall that we're able to plaster directly onto it without plywoods, drywalls, laths, drainage planes. It's simply uh, the material itself, the insulation itself can be plastered. That saves us a lot of steps, a lot of time and money. And also it allows us to create this breathable wall I was talking about. So now we have the hempcrete interior, which is uh, permeable to, to water vapor, as I was saying. And then, we, and then we plaster it with either a lime or an earth plaster, which is also permeable. So then the, the surface, which is going to be in, in the interior, of course, it's, it's your protection against uh, crayons and whatever else is happening inside. And the outside is protection against liquid water. 
those things have the same permeability to water vapor as the hemcrete itself. So therefore, we're in the inside of the building. Let's say you're in a shower, or let's say that this is the kitchen, and there's water vapor in the air. The wall will take that on and hold it while, uh, until the, the, the interior uh, relative humidity goes down, and then it'll let it back out. So, so we basically are creating a stable interior relative humidity with a passive material, just with a wall material. So that's a huge advantage of, of hemcrete. It's basically, in the simplest way of saying it, it's a healthier wall. So we said it's a longer lasting wall because it uh, deals with water well. It's also a healthier wall because it deals with water well. Another advantage of, of hemcrete is that it's carbon sequestering. You remember before I said that our, our goal is to be carbon neutral. Well, hemcrete actually sequesters carbon. Let me tell you how it does that. First of all, any cellulose material, wood for example, or hemp, takes carbon in during its life cycle. And usually when it decays, it lets it back into the atmosphere. If you take that plant and then put it into a wall, for example, in hemcrete, then that carbon is now sequestered in the wall and not becoming part of climate change. So the hemcrete in this building, this one building alone, will sequester 20,000 pounds of carbon. That's a pretty big accomplishment. And it's all thanks to hemcrete. Hemcrete is part of the natural building world. What are natural materials? They're basically materials that are usually local or site harvested or have low embodied energy like hemcrete does. There are also materials that work well with the site. And one thing that's great about hemcrete is that you can create a strong wall of different thicknesses based on what your insulation needs are. That's because you use forms around some kind of other structure like wood that will hold up the roof and then you form around that and put the hemcrete in the cavity. So for example, in our house here, the Now House prototype, since we're trying to get to such high energy efficiency levels, we have a 16 inch thick wall to get us a performance rating of R40. We could also do a 10 inch wall. So we have flexibility in terms of the amount of insulation that we, we're going to use with the exact same procedure for construction. That's fairly unique in the world and it's another reason why Hemcrete's a really great product. At the top of Peach Knob, workers build a home for former Mayor Russ Martin, the first of its kind in the U.S. Europe's been using this product for about 10 to 15 years, and they're pretty far ahead of us in green building. The product is industrial hemp. Madera's company imports it from the U.K. to make hempcrete. Hempcrete is mixed with a lime-based binder. Before you make any jokes about workers getting high on the job, builders quickly point out that hemp is not marijuana. The industrial hemp plant is a cousin of the marijuana plant, but it has very little, 0.03% THC. You can't get high on this. Madera says hempcrete has many health and economic benefits. The material allows air and moisture to circulate, preventing the buildup of mold, mildew, and other issues. With this product, you'll have no termites, no dry rot, no moisture issues because the air is constantly moving in and out. But it's also well insulated. At first glance, the walls of the hemp house don't look too steady, but they are. In fact, they're about a foot thick, and builders say they should cut down homeowners' energy costs by at least half. The 3,000-square-foot home cost about $55,000 to build. The home's designer says his inspiration is personal. My daughter, she's eight years old and autistic with multiple chemical and uh, environmental sensitivities. Brenner says little Bailey has seizures as a reaction to certain chemicals and materials found in traditional homes. My goal as a designer is to try to find and locate products that uh, I would feel and my wife would feel good about us having in our home that wouldn't have an adverse um, effect on, on her health. Brenner and Madera hope this is the beginning of many hemp houses in Asheville and in the U.S. Karen Wynn, News 13.
a few years ago I set up a company called HAB, Happiness Architecture Beauty, as a development company. And we're finishing this scheme in about two or three weeks' time. It's a, it's a scheme uh, of about 42 homes called the Triangle and uh, designed by a wonderful award-winning British architect, Glenn Howells. My great difficulty is that every, every new scheme we're building, we're building seven now, um, I, I, lo I look at the range of materials out there, I cannot find one to match hemp. I can't find one that has such a low embodied energy, that, that uh, locks carbon in, that has such a low environmental impact, that can be grown locally and harvested with minimum inputs in a matter of just a few months. It's an incredibly expedient building method. Every other system I look at involves a skin and a structure and an insulation and oh, and then you're worrying about where the thermal mass goes. And I cannot find a material which does what hemp does. We made a television series about this project and we went off and planted a field of hemp and over 12 or 14 weeks and watched it grow to four metres tall. And that was next to a power station, which was rather neat. So, and the trains went by and the road motorway went by and you saw the plumes of smoke coming out of the chimneys of the power station. You thought, this field of hemp is absorbing all the CO2 and dirt and we're going to build houses with it. So there was, for me, there's a sort of tremendous excitement in the pioneering notion of using this material. The, the project manager here on site um, said to me, he loved the material because we had this lorry reversing on site, a big mixing, cement mixing lorry. Instead of pouring out, heavy, wet, toxic, caustic concrete, it would instead pour out this sort of fluffy, lightweight stuff that looks like sawdust. It didn't require any power tools, so all we had was buckets and barrows and blokes. And because there are no power tools, there are no cables everywhere, and it's just, it's, it actually makes for a very, very healthy, very safe uh, building site, uh, hemp. It, it's a very, very uh, builder-friendly material. I mean, you know, it's a no-brainer.